This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. The BAISS Private School Track and Field Meet will get underway tomorrow and run through Friday. The Queens College Comets are the two-time defending champions. I have trust in my kids, and I feel like, um, you know, for the last two years, they've been coming out. They've been competing, doing the best for their ability. Bantam Division, they have added some different um, categories, I understand. Will that hurt or help QC, you think? Uh, well, in the long run, I think it's going to help us. It's going to help all the schools because uh, um, in the bottom division, it was a small pool. Now it's a bigger pool. Which division? Uh, uh, Queens College is extremely strong. Which uh, division concerns you? The younger divisions are stronger. Um, the senior divisions um, are shaky. So we just got to strategize and move persons from other divisions to help it out. Uh, concerned about that big red machine up the road? Uh, well, always. Uh, I know they're going to bring it, and every year they've been bringing it, so I expect them to do very well. Um, the healthiest team will win. If we, if last year we got depth. This year we just got to stick together, and hopefully everybody could complete the three days because it's a hard track meet and it's tough on athletes. So if everybody could come through it healthy, I think that, I think we could do a good we could do a good job. The track and field championships come on the heels of the basketball season, which closed out a few weeks ago. The Jordan Prince William Falcons won both the senior girls and senior boys championships, and today the Cowpen Road campus was rocking as a victory celebration was held. Among those bringing remarks was the president of the Bahamas National Baptist Missionary and Educational Convention, the Reverend Dr. William Thompson. This is not a small achievement. This meant that these young men and women put in, put in a lot of hard work. They were ready for instructions. And while on the court, they carry out instructions. When you win, remember, everyone is coming after you now. You send the big red on pocket. So they're going back to practice twice as hard. They come back to get what they call their things. But we know it's we things. And nobody will take this from us easily anymore. For the players, coaches, and administrators, it was all about restoring Falcon pride. We came a little short last year, but this year we determined to cross over the finish line. I feel good that we won the, the championship. Um, even though one of our players are graduating, we just work harder and stronger. Come become champions two years straight. It feels good. You know, you play, you work hard. You gotta say, you gotta succeed, and we gotta have fun about it. Perfection takes time, all right. So, uh, and the guys really wanted it. You know, we work over the summer. Uh, we we started our program. Before everybody else, we started workouts, weights, sign, all those stuff, because the guys really, really wanted to make a statement this year uh, by going too straight. We have to encourage each other and to know that all of us need to be a part of this victory. It's not just the team, it's a school spirit that has caused the victory, so the school has to be there. The whole school was there when we won at the gym, so now we're celebrating together. Come Monday, the Hugh Campbell basketball tournament will tip off at the AF Adderley Gym. And it's all about bragging rights in the senior boys division. This year we are having a total of some 28 teams, um, a pool, four pools of seven. Um, they are very interesting pools. And the approach, as we have done in last year, we're using a blind, a blind pool. That means the, the teams, are, they start off in their groupings and then they are shuffled throughout the, the tournament. Teams must come prepared to play. The players will determine who wins. The teams will determine who advance to the championships. The Commonwealth Youth Games will take place right here in the 242 this summer, and regional committee members are happy the Bahamas stepped up after St. Lucia pulled out. We didn't want a generation of youth who had prepared themselves for 2017 to not have an edition of these games. And so we asked the assembly to put it back on the floor and allow others to come forward. And Glasgow, which had just recently hosted the main games, said they would be prepared to step in. Sri Lanka, which had bid unsuccessfully for the games before and had lost to Gold Coast, said they would step in. And then suddenly we heard that the Bahamas had offered to do it. And the fundamental principle of allowing smaller countries 
to be able to host these games, countries that may have challenges in hosting the main games. The others conveniently withdrew and gave the mantle of leadership to the Bahamas. The Caribbean will be well represented at the Commonwealth Youth Games, and that includes a delegation from Trinidad and Tobago. We're going to be represented in a number of sports. As a matter of fact, I, I can say to the, the Team TTO, Team Trinidad and Tobago supporters here in Bahamas, I know that they will be torn because I would expect that they would rally their support behind Bah Team Bahamas. But um, we are going to be bringing our largest ever um, Commonwealth Youth Games team. Um, we would have qualified in rugby sevens, female, and um, beach soccer. So that, um, as I said, we, we are carried to bring our largest ever team, and I'm fully behind bringing that team, even though it, 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 it's, a, it has a significant cost financially. But I think it is an investment in the youth of the Commonwealth, and we, we have to just support. And that will do it for sports. Stay tuned, check on weather still to come.